the second part of our Saturday Double Bill, I'm joined by Johnny Hudson and Aaron Keylock of Silver Roller. Gotta hold on. Um, it's got to look good on a bass drum skin. You've got to be cool. Same with it every night on stage. And mm-hmm. what was the other one? Wasn't there another? Uh, was it? Uh, Jaron Johnson always said, uh, it's got to be something the guys dig and girls love. And it's kind of like, yeah, it's pretty true. Okay, we've just been jamming. With, there's a little studio up in Liverpool that we use um, in a repurposed school called Studio 5. Um, which is amazing. I love the idea that this school is, you know, is no longer a school, so people have bought it out and it's a... And we just finished a rehearsal session and we had an hour left of studio time and it was like that, should we call it a day or should we should we use the hour? And then I think Joe start, like kind of laid that beat down. No, I was and, that riff and I remember Joe very distinctively. He, um, everyone I've ever played that riff with always plays just like a standard street 4-4 beat on it and Joe did the push on the on the snare and I don't know why, it just gave it some extra life and everyone was like, I don't know, it just captured the energy which is kind of what writing songs is about, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've known Jared since 2018. I met him in Nam. Um, mm-hmm. Not Vietnam. Um, <laughs> I was about. I was just about to say your lighting is lovely. Oh Christ, we've gone really right now. Oh, there we go. I like how you. I like how you've done it with the plant in the corner. It looks nice. <laughs> oh, there we go. Are you? Are you in the snug? No, no, no. This is. He's trying to. He's trying to compete with my one. He's, like, oh, <laughs> he's got to. He's got. You got to go for it this time. You know. Well, I heard your single. Um, it's a great first single. Thank um, you. Thanks, man. Yeah, we um I think we went for the uh, the heavy approach this time around, don't we? Mm. I think That's that was. Um, I think that was like a Velvet Revolver. Uh, uh, theory that just go with your heaviest song as the as the lead single. Mm. So I'm here with uh, Johnny and Aaron of uh, Silver Roller. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. Thank it's you. good to be with you again, man. It's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while. Uh, obviously, uh, well, it's just under, probably just under a year ago, you guys were on the uh, kind of the bands to look out for video. And people will be going, hang on a second, I kind of recognize these people. But when they called Keylock last time, and I was, yeah. uh, obviously yes uh, so that, that's the elephant in the room so so, so what what's well, the the he thing still is behind... called Kilo. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the what, what's the reason behind the uh the change to silver roller guys uh well you know uh, we were we were with a manager we were co- you know we were being managed by um a management company who, who had kind of had an idea for what they wanted from it um which didn't necessarily match up with what we wanted from it. Mm. Um, and we released some music and then, but we released music actually like a week before we went into lockdown. Shine On Me came out mm. and it got some great coverage. Everyone seemed to love it. And then all of a sudden we couldn't do anything with it. And then we kind of sat in lockdown for two years and just thought, well, you know, let's, let's move in the way that we want to move. So we did. Mm. Is, any any particular reason for the name Silver Roller? It's an unusual well, you name. You know what? We um, when we when we said let's 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 have a band name. You know, let's have a, a a proper band name. Everyone starts throwing kind of ideas at each other, and I had kind of said we should really come up with like an Aerosmith, which mm. is obviously really easy to do, isn't it? Just <laughs> yeah, great it. idea. <laughs> um, and everyone kind of, everyone seemed that happy with the idea that, that we were going to have that kind of name that didn't really mean anything. But then you've got to come up with it, <laughs> you know? Um, and then... In today's uh, world, it's so difficult. Yeah. Like doing yeah. a name now. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you think about, like, the, you know, Super Tramp. Yeah. You know, like, try and think of that kind of thing. And I I'd just watched an interview with... Um, Paul Rogers, I'm into that guy, if anyone hasn't heard. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and uh, he said that when he was naming Bad Company, there was a movie out at the time, old Western film, I think in about 1970, 71, called Bad Company. And the um, the poster had on it, Beware of Bad Company. And he thought, oh, that's great. You know, I'm going to write a song. And then when he came to naming the band, um, 
he picked up the phone to Mick Rouse and said, bad company. Uh, and I thought, oh, Western movies, that's pretty good. Let's see if there's anything in that. So I, I was looking through lists of Western films from like the 20s to now, and Silver kept popping up. Mm-hmm. Like Knights of the Silver Rider, Three Silver Dollars, The Silver Lords, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, oh, Silver's pretty good. I like that. And since every new rock band is called Black Something or Something Something yeah. Black, yeah. Uh, it was like, that's, it's almost like the kind of flip side in it, the like the antithesis of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think it was Joe, was it Joe? That said, mm-hmm. we should have like a motion yeah, thing. Right. It should sound like it's moving. Um, and then Silver Roller just kind of, Became the oh yeah, and to me it sounds like something like a like a fifties Cadillac or something, you know, yeah. kind of rolling around Chicago in like fifty five with like muddy and uh, you know Leonard Chess in it or something, you know. So yeah, we so we, we kind of want when when you say it out loud, you go, that's pretty good, mm-hmm. um, and then we all kind of said, yeah, that's that's got to be the one. And Aaron quite rightly pointed out that um, it's got to look good on a bass drum skin. You've got to be cool. Same with it every night on stage. And yeah. what was the other one? Wasn't there another? Uh, was it? Uh, Jaron Johnson always said, uh, it's got to be something that guys dig and girls love. And it's kind of like, yeah, it's pretty true. You know? mm. um, no, I, I agree. When I, when I saw the name, I thought, you know, it feels like, ironically, something from like an old 70s movie or something. Or like, uh, as you mentioned there, like a, a vintage car. Like yeah. just getting in my silver roller. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that that was the thing as well, and and the more we kind of thought that's pretty good, that it was kind of like it's kind of timeless. Mm. Um, it sounds a little bit ethereal. It sounds yeah. there's a little kind of tinge of Americana to it, uh, which you know we, we quite like. Um, I think it's like um, it's meaningless, but it um it has like it strong is. imagery with it. Yes. I mean, it kind of like, when you say it, you kind of get like, rather than a meaning to the word, you just get like images straight away to the, to when people say, which is kind of, it kind of means something to everybody. Mm. But, so, And as well as that, in, in the modern age, um, it, when you Google Keylock, there's a million things come up for it. Yes. Um, and one of the things that we'd said was we need unique branding. We need a, an instant. Mm. That's what that is. And um, when we Googled Silver Roller, there was like a Japanese pocket knife from the 90s, and that was it. And it was like, wow, no one's thought of this before. You must mm. be kidding. Um, and then, you know, you, you check the socials, you check Spotify, and you think, right, that, that's that's the one. Because um, it, it's important now, you know, you need that unique branding. And um, in a de- like you, again, back, I suppose back to Paul Rogers, or even like The Who. You couldn't call a band the Who now, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Obviously, because the Who have happened, but like, or free, you know what I mean? Like, you couldn't get away with names like that now because it's so ambivalent mm-hmm. and yeah. you, you'd never find it anywhere. Mm. Um, for those that are new to you guys, I'm sure there'll be quite a lot of people that will be finding you, particularly on the upcoming tour. How would you kind of define and describe the band's sound? Like, who are you? Awful. <laughs> um Aaron, go. Um, <laughs> I think it's kind of like um it's quite hard to say. I mean the only thing you can really just say is just rock and roll and it's kind of mm. I think it's timeless again, like, like calling it seventies kind of um I don't know, puts like a it's kind of like a roof on it. I think that like when you listen to the record there's a lot of a lot of different influences you can hear in there. I think obviously we on some of the songs and some of the parts you can hear we wear influences on our sleeve, but I also think we found a lot more of ourselves as songwriters now and as a band, like coming together. Mm. Um, I think we were a lot more experimental on this um, and we've let things kind of flow in the studio. So I think it's just kind of like the definition of rock and roll and the thing of like, you used to get like a guy that was into jazz and the guy that was into like marching bands and then a guy that was into soul and blues and everyone came together and made something that was unique. And I mm. think from the idea of rock and roll, whether it's very much a rock and roll record in that sense, um, we all kind of come together with different ideas and influences and just kind of see where the song goes with it. And we're kind of just, um, I don't know, uh, open enough with each other to just let it flow and see what happens with the song. Um, so, yeah, I think the record is just a rock and roll record and it's just very much like a capture of us in the studio at that time. Mm. I mean, it, for, for me... 
from from particularly from what I've heard from this uh, this new single, mm. I would say it's kind of it's classic, but it's modernized. Mm-hmm. You know, it's classic rock, but for today. Like if I was to move this kind of prime era of rock mm-hmm. and make it in today's world, I would probably say that's what you guys are now. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, of course, you know you you've got this uh, new single around the corner. Well, it'll be out by the time time uh, we we uh, release this episode called Hold. Um, could you tell us a bit about this new single and kind of the meaning behind it, how it came about? Well, how it came about, um, we had just been jamming. If mm. I remember correctly, we'd just been jamming. Was there's a little studio up in Liverpool that we use. Um, in a repurposed school called Studio 5, um, which is amazing. I love the idea that this school is, you know, is no longer a school, so people have bought it out and it's a, anyway. Um, and we just finished a rehearsal session for pre-production for something. I can't yeah. remember what it was. Yeah. And we had an hour left of studio time and it was like that, should we call it a day or should we, should we use the hour? And then, I think Joe start, like kind of laid that beat down. No, I was, and, that riff, and I remember Joe very distinctively. He, um, everyone I've ever played that riff with always plays just like a standard straight four four beat on it, and Joe did the push on the on the snare, and I don't know why it just gave it some extra life, and everyone was like, I don't know, it just captured the energy, which is kind of what writing songs is about, and it captures yeah. that energy in the room, and it flows. Um, you locked yourself away in the corner writing those lyrics, and all of a sudden it flew together. Yeah. And, yeah. And funny enough, actually, was I had this kind of idea of what I wanted to write the song about. I can't remember what it was. And I, I wasn't quite kind of hitting it. And, and then Joe said, when we get to that stop, I feel like that lyric has to be hold on me. And I was like, bingo, I've got it. And then the, the you know, the paper got crunched up and thrown away. And it just the whole thing just came out. And, you know, an hour before that song didn't exist. Um, and I think that I, I quite like that that's the lead single, do you know what I mean? Like that mm-hmm. song was like written in an hour. Obviously, we developed it. We didn't just write the thing in an hour and then it was done. Yeah. Um, but like the idea that it was there, like the nucleus of it was there. Like, And I'm going to say it was about 85% done on it in that hour. And mm-hmm. it was probably the quickest song we've ever written. And the newest mm-hmm. on the record, right? And it's the newest on the record, yeah. Interesting. Um of course, you've mentioned it a couple of times there. Do you, do you have an an album in in the in the pipeline? Do you have something coming around the corner? I just I'd say it's somewhere in between an EP and a full album. Um, okay. Lengthwise, it's the same kind of length as those old LPs from the sixties, seventies. Hmm. Um, but I think in today's day and age, it would be classed as an EP. We just call it the record because. Yeah. That like we're not like it's I suppose it's cla- like classed as an EP, um, because it's what six tracks. Yeah, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, I mean it's either oh. like a long EP or a short album, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, hmm. I mean it depends on the length, I suppose. I've heard yeah. that before. Because <laughs> um, I mean I would say, like for example, uh, Rather Sun's new record Lightbringer, that's yeah. only got six tracks on it. Yeah, right. But it's classed as. A record doesn't think. Yeah. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? So I, I would assume that it's something to do with um and length. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what, man? I if it was if it was me calling the shots, I mm. would much prefer to do shorter records and more of them than just be like because you can't get people to you can get people to sit through an entire series on Netflix, but ask yeah. them to listen to ten songs. It's like yeah. you've pissed on a Christmas dinner. Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> my God, do you know what I mean? It's not that long. Um, so I would prefer to do less, but mm-hmm. more of them, you know? Mm. I think there is something in that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've spoke to a couple of different people and they were like, I quite like having kind of a snappy album, an album that's kind of in and out, yeah. like, like, I don't know, half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so, so do you, for this EP or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> <laughs> um, do, are we looking at like next year? Are we looking tentatively at some something? Or you... Well, we <laughs> think there'll be another one before, like another single 
before the end of the year. Hmm. Um, I don't like saying like because the, the the way the industry moves, you know what I mean. Like so mm. much happens, so much changes. Um, that I don't want to go. Yeah, 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 definitely. And then big nothing Bang. happens, yeah. you know. Then you're um, a liar. <laughs> um, I, I've heard that before, I know. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we think there's going to be another another track before the end of the year. Yeah. Mm. What what can can a fans going to ex- like uh, see more of kind of a similar vein of hold or is is there going to be some variety on there? Is it are you guys oh, going to kind of change it up a little bit? Do it, you think there has to be light and shade, man? There has mm. to be light and shade. I think um, not to kind of um, have a go at anyone, but I I I've seen a, I've seen quite a lot of. I've been on a lot of bills and I've seen a lot of bands and I've mm. gone, wow, this is just like, if you think of Zeppelin, man, like Zepp, like you go to a Zeppelin gig back in the day and it wasn't for yeah, two hours. Yeah. You know what I mean, they did sit down and play acoustic and, and all that mm. kind of thing. There has to be that for me on a record. Otherwise, why bother releasing more than two or three <laughs> tunes? Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, if you're just yeah. going to say the same thing over and over again, um, so yeah, there's 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 a there's light and shade on there, man. It's got to be. Mm. I I think I think you're right on that though. I do. I feel that a lot today, um, it's easy to fall into the trap of like if you get a hit single or something quite successful, mm. that um, you know, you you'd be tempted to kind of go, well, people like that, so we'll do more of that. And then it, before it, you know quite- it. <laughs> yeah, Clapton says, doesn't he? Like having a healthy disregard for what the audience wants, yeah. Yeah. um, because if it's good, they'll they'll like it, you know. Um, mm. and um, I think we we always like. There's been times where we've been writing stuff and we've gone, we've said this, yeah, <laughs> get rid of it, you know, and it's and it's gone, and and you you start over. Or, like I, I never just reach out. A, I think the moment you have, you think you have a formula for writing a hit is. You know, probably time to mix it up because nobody can mm. guess what it is, and you're probably writing songs for the wrong reason. You know, um, mm. trying to guess what people latch on to and what people will see something in is impossible. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like you have to write a song for yourself, and then whoever jumps on board with it is a bonus. I, I think like most of the time when I'm writing stuff, lyrically more than anything, is it's just kind of what I need to say there and then. And then mm-hmm. melodically, what I'm usually trying to do is impress these guys. <laughs> like I'm trying to get these guys to go, oh, that's good, you know. Um, and I think that's the interesting thing, especially even live. Do you know what I mean? Like when we're playing live, everyone throws bits in, and I'm, oh, what was that, you know? And then mm-hmm. you come off stage, going, oh, you've never done that before, man. What was it? And it's, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like it just happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I think, yeah, it, I. I don't think do, do people think like that. Do people think we've got this formula? Do you think? <laughs> I'm interviewing you now, man. <laughs> I I feel not not every well for me. I feel that the the top tier of bands certainly don't. Mm, right. But I think I think that um, some people after a while, maybe when you get about four or five albums deep, you can kind mm. of subconsciously fall into it. Mm-hmm. Um. I think that an upcoming band, if you get a hit, I think it's very tempting to go, oh, I want a bit more of that. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> yeah, my, my PRS count's looking pretty good at the moment. Let's do another one of those. I, I don't know. I think there's a, there's a temptation. You, know, you can see it in their eyes, and I'm like, oh, go on. Like, don't. <laughs> like, you, you've just you've won on the thing. Record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, at the time of this release, uh, it won't be long until you guys head out on the road uh, for a, a few shows with uh, Jared James Nichols and Dwarf. How did that kind of opportunity present itself? Um, Jared's manager messaged us on Instagram. Um, that easy? Yeah, I mean, I've known Jared since 2018. I, th- I met him in Nam. Um, uh, not Vietnam. Um, <laughs> 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 it right sounds a bit like you're having a I'm having a you bit of a flashback there, there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah I jammed with him a bunch of times he'd been over um, I think I think Jared just wanted like a bunch of 
friends he had over here on the on the different shows. And um, mm. seems like he's got a different guests and friends on. So yeah, I mean it was it was it was that simple. Um interesting. But that'd be fun. So yeah. Mm. And we've got some headline shows around that as well. We're playing uh, Sheffield on the twelfth, Liverpool on the thirteenth, and then we're ending the run at Paper Dress in Hackney in London. So yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously at the minute in terms of stuff that you've released people can well people will be able to hear that one single mm. so what so in a in a silver roller show or even a a, a support with Jared and, and co um, what can people expect chaos <laughs> 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 um, I think what they can expect is is honest like an honest performance um, I think you know if if the band is uh, had a tough day, I think all that frustration will come out on stage. You, you know, if the band's feeling mellow, you'll get a a, a bit more of a cerebral. Mm. Maybe we, you know we, we can even do it like BB King and sit down. You know, uh, <laughs> now it, it'd be honest, man. You know, it's it's. I think they're always honest. Do you know what I mean? Like we we open for Cold Stairs. Um, when was that, man? July. July was it? Yeah. Wow. Um, and we go in. It, it was like a. Um, it was almost like a like a theatre room and had like the proscenium arch, I think it's called, and it was big old stage, and everyone was buzzing. You know what I mean? Everyone's like, "Wow, look at that!" You know what I mean? Look at that mm. big old theatre stage, and then everyone gets on stage and tears it apart because everyone's all excited to get on stage. And then uh, the night after, we went and played in uh, where did we play? Night Owl in London, and then. It's a club show, totally opposite kind of setup with barely any room. But then you've got this room full of hippies and rock and roll fans making an energy that you go, right, well, I'm feeding off that now, so I'm going to give it back. Um, so I think it's just honest, in it? Like, it's just... Yeah. Um, and then me and I will fall thing. over each other at some point. I get hit with a mic stand. You'll get hit with a mic stand. I think it's like the whole <laughs> Jagger line when he said, like, you know, the crowd has to kind of throw a ball to the to the band and the band has to throw it back to the crowd and everybody kind of passes the ball back and forth to build, to kind of create a, a good night and a good vibe for everybody. Um, mm. And what the vibe of that room is, is kind of very much dependent on how the band are and how the crowd are and how everybody just comes together, really. Um, so, yeah, it should be fun. Mm. I mean, I feel that, you know, uh, supporting Jared and, and DeWolf is like a perfect um, audience for you guys. I mean, I, f- I think that that's kind of a uh, yeah. that that market. I think of, of people will definitely dig you. You know, I think. Well, we we thought the same thing when the yeah. offer came through with Jared and DeWolf. It was like, wow, there's two bands that are we've wanted to kind of hit the road with or play shows with, and they're going to be in the same room as us you know so mm. well we'll be in the same room as them so yeah it's um it's very cool man yeah i think it's going to be a very vibey vibey tour you know mm. good question for kind of returning guests uh if you could kind of guest on an album cool. uh or even kind cool. of be be around a record at the time of its making <laughs> what would that album be Jeremy? Oh, um, if I could, is that two questions or have I got to pick one? Um, well, you can you can choose or you can divide so, it into things. I mean, you've got the control in this kind of uh, it, scenario. If, if I was going to watch an album being made, mm. that would, without any hesitation, repetition, etc., it would be Fathers and Sons by Muddy Waters. I wouldn't do a thing. I'd just sit back and mm. shut up and watch the master at work with that band because that <laughs> record for me is just biblical um, if I could guest with someone mm. I think the like the obvious would be Paul Rogers but I couldn't sing in front of him man do you know what I mean I'd just be like <laughs> wow here's, here's what you do but really badly um, <laughs> so oh it's tough I don't know yeah. Aaron Kulak <laughs> I'd like to guest with him. <laughs> um, I think to watch a record, mine would have been Exile on Main Street. Um, just because I think that's like the record that encom- 
like it basically captured everything that rock and roll was in the how it was made um it was keith making keith's record i think mm. on a lot of the other records they made hits and every album had a hit and you kind of could tell they were making albums with hits on and that was kind of keith's record where he sat up till four in the morning writing and drinking wine and whatever else and um so yeah i think i would pick that but to guest with i i don't know um it's a lot of choice is there is there a guy or a, a, an artist that you look at and you think they would just be cool to kind of hang around with or be around? <laughs> like you you can you can wander into a room and s- insert person will be there. You know what? Actually, I'd I'd love to have a jam with Slash because mm-hmm. he's played with everyone, hasn't he? Um, yeah, was, yeah, quite literally, he's guested on so <laughs> many records and that and and. I just feel like he'd be one of those guys that if you went, hey, let's let's uh, let's jam some Hendrix, he'd, he'd be on it. If you said let's jam some some this, some that, I think he'd just know it. You know what I mean? I think Slash mm-hmm. would be one of those one of those dudes. But then I'd want to kind of I don't know. I'd, I'd want to put some like mad organ player with him and get rid of like yeah. a a second guitar player and then maybe like percussion or something. Lucas Nelson, man, I'd love to have a jam with him. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. far I find somebody else to be my lover. Yeah, man. Is is there a is there an artist of kind of the like today, like a new a new kind of band or a new one that you'd go for? Scott Holiday. Yeah. And Jay. I'd love to sing with Jay and watch him absolutely wipe the floor with me. <laughs> 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 you know? Luke, yeah, I'd say if you or Black Black the guys from Black Smoke as well, that's some gents too, yeah. man. You know, yeah, um, love Black Smoke. I love yeah. Rival Sons. Yeah. Love Lucas Nelson. So eh, any Those any three. any of them, I think. I I have heard through the grapevine that um, Black Smoke are one for pranking. Believe it or not. <laughs> So, so you, you may, you, if you are in that scenario, you might find some things going wrong. Uh, <laughs> I, I have heard, uh, I mean, I won't steal his kind of thing, but you know, Brad, Brad, uh, from a band called Massive. Yeah. Uh, do you know Brad? They, yeah. They, uh, they, um, did like a, a few dates and a few tours with them. And, um, apparently on the last night of their tour, uh, they, uh, they walked out. And um, they had found that they were, uh, they'd somehow managed to draw uh, I've, some phallic I've symbols story, man. <laughs> all over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard the story, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I told Brad years ago when I was there. Yeah, it's, it's a small world, but uh, it is, it is. I'm kind of jealous. They just bought me dinner on the last night. <laughs> <laughs> really? They, they didn't do anything. Well, they, they put me a nice meal. I mean, um, they, yeah, but what was it? I didn't get any drawings it's on my you're eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it raises Did you see the it question. getting made, though? My question is nice. Like, <laughs> no, yeah. It raises the question, you know. So um, yeah, may, maybe they were waiting and you just ate it and just walked yeah. away and they were like... <laughs> <laughs> <So easy. laughs> um, well, thank you very much, guys. And uh, obviously, if you're... Uh, people want to catch that uh, debut single hold um you can click on that via the link in the description below and uh if you want to check them out live again uh, a link will be in the description below for the uh, the support slot tour uh, with jared james nichols and dewolf and for a few of these select shows that you're going to be doing on your own awesome. thank you very much oh actually can i add oh, go on buddy guy would top the list for everyone <laughs> really I jam with Buddy Guy over anybody, yeah, yeah. That's the top tier choice. Is is, is there a reason? Buddy Guy. He's the last of the great Chicago Just bluesmen, he is. isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and he's Buddy Guy. <laughs> he's 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 the guy that Henrik stole from, you know. Hmm. Need to say more. Drop in that bombshell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank it's you. True though, isn't it? It's true. There's videos yeah. of Hendrix in the in the audience of Buddy Guy watching him like. Watching Buddy play his guitar behind his head and stuff. Mm. Mm. There you go. Yeah.